Hello guys, just Goran here and welcome back to another episode of Building the Bexbergen. Today we are working a little bit more on the area around the entrance, uh, starting with a small time lapse of me decorating the um, kind of moat of the primate house. Uh, over here I've placed in a little fence and I'm putting a, a rope fence next to it. Uh, the challenge here being that the <laughs> fence is kind of a set length and I have to kind of work in this this hanging rope which has a kind of different length and I have to make that fit in but eventually we got that to work and here you can see my method of placing these rope fences down is just taking the rope piece getting those all in place and then taking the kind of wooden pole and putting that on every point where it needs to be. Now I did this a little bit badly, but you know, selecting everything and then getting it in place kind of worked. Then I want grass next to this moat. In real life there's kind of tall, it's not really tall grass, it's not really reed either. Over here we're using reeds and elephant grass. Um, that looks fine. But it looks just a little bit too dense. There's a bit too much of everything. So eventually I end up taking all of this out and find actually a much better uh, kind of palette of plants to use. Which we're probably going to go back and revisit the uh, second primate house to kind of incorporate some of this into there as well. Because over there should be kind of the same as over here right now they're very different but uh, over here you can see me test out a whole bunch of different plants and I, yeah, I saw that log and I was like oh that's actually an interesting thing to put some branches in there but over here we get to something that kind of works the diamond leaf willow uh, some upside down elephant grass um, some uh, some vines liana mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and I'm trying all sorts of things. Nettle, uh, upside down papyrus plants, those don't really work out that well. I don't know what that other bush is called that I used. And the problem with that bush is that it's just a little too um, spherical. It, po it points to the side too much. But over here I'm, I'm taking it all apart and I'm looking at all the different pieces I found that were kind of functional. And the one I've loved the most was the wattle bush so i took that as a basis and kind of started adding bits that worked into it um ended up going with the wattle bush upside down elephant grass regular elephant grass uh, and the diamond leaf willow i also had another plant uh, the white sage bush i think it was uh, but that one just had a little bit too much of a different color compared to the rest so kind of stood out too much so i didn't go with that one but yeah now we have a very nice palette and kind of basic idea of, of how i want the the plants along the shore to look and i can just start copying and kind of tweaking it all along the shore sorry if this moves a bit too fast but i didn't want to make the time last too long because we don't really do that much it's mainly just uh, the placement of all of these because there's of course a very big shoreline and I don't place it around the entire shoreline um, I do leave in some holes here and there because uh, of course the plants wouldn't grow everywhere but what we do end up creating which is pretty nice um, is over here we are getting started on the gorilla habitat and it was actually kind of funny that uh, I had already used the diamond leaf willow uh, over there before but yeah using different types of sizes of water bush to really get that in there and also rotating it 90 degrees or almost 90 degrees to have it kind of stick up and be a lot thinner because again I really don't want this to be well I want it to be a bit dense but I don't want it to be too big and uh, the problem with the first kind of reeds was that they're just very wide uh, whereas it's just a very simple shoreline and, and up to the shore and it's actually very mowed down grass pretty much. Uh, taking out the water to do a little bit of terraforming here uh, just to get some more variation in the slope um, like there is in real life um, but yeah what was pretty interesting about 
all of this. Oh yeah, <laughs> first we're adding in a little bit of a uh, long grass to just get a little bit more detail in there and different kind of texture uh, of plant. But what's pretty cool is that we're of course doing both the chimpanzee and the gorilla habitat and uh, it doesn't come across super well. But what I really tried is to have kind of a difference between the two. Uh, the chimpanzee habitat uh, is much, much older than the gorilla habitat, which got uh, renovated like one or two years ago, much like uh, the safari restaurant area and the, uh, the entire entrance. So what I kind of tried to do is to make the foliage at the gorillas even less dense and even lower so that you can kind of tell that it's it's a bit younger compared to the chimpanzee habitat which is i think a neat little detail and to accomplish this uh, instead of copy pasting everything i really started to kind of go piece by piece on the gorilla habitat um, because if you have a very large clump of the different bushes it doesn't really it is less noticeable that they're uh, kind of the same pattern repeating, but if you have these kind of standalone little clumps of bush, I think it's easier to notice that uh, you just pasted the same bush over and over again. So that's why I, uh, I did that piece by piece. But yeah, right now we're kind of getting to the back area of the gorilla habitat, and that is a lot more dense from what I could tell from pictures. So I did make that quite dense, but at the front it's, it's quite a uh, low still. So yeah, that pretty much ended that off. That is, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, now I started to look at uh, the bushes that we used at the second primate house and kind of start copying stuff over, but we'll get to the inside of the primate house now, which I don't time lapse because it's a bit too, uh, well, nauseating. <laughs> so yeah, let's get to a real time segment. Right, hope you like that time lapse, but here we are back with a real time portion because I have worked a little bit on the interior of the primate house. I have basically put in the main climbing frame, still need to decorate it a bit with some ropes and stuff just like we did over here, but this one's also quite barren. Uh, I don't know how to make them less barren, they, they look a little bit too, I feel like I simultaneously feel like this log is too close to the thing, but at the same time it looks like it does on the picture, which is frustrating. I'm not going to change it because I'm pretty happy with how this is. Maybe if we make it a fin log, but that would be the only fin log in the entire thing. That would also be weird. But yeah, the monkeys aren't using it yet, uh, which is kind of the same thing we experienced with the other primate house back when we created these climbing structures. Uh, the monkeys weren't using them either, but eventually they started to, and I actually see them on there quite a lot now. And uh, these guys don't seem to be climbing around that much either. I just saw the announcement for the giant ant eater, and we're going to get actual termite mounts, like ones that look a lot better than uh, than this one because <laughs> we have this term my mind but it's kind of a I don't even know what to call it it's just a shell of plastic pretty much um, but we're going to get much more realistic looking ones which we can probably use over here and over here and probably also as a replacement for the one uh, for this forager in the gorilla habitat which is pretty exciting I'm really looking forward to the see I don't feel like there's that many pieces that I'm going to be able to use but who knows, maybe there is a lot of stuff that uh, we can use in a way that's not intended, but does work out for us, which is always the case. I mean, I'm using tons of items <laughs> in an unintended way, probably. All right, I'm gonna do something real stupid that I'm probably gonna regret, but this path is starting to become an issue <laughs> uh, because I want brick over here Kind of going from here to about here. Uh, but I can't, because if I remove just any of this path, it just removes everything. So, yeah. 
we're gonna have to do something about that. Now before we do, I'm gonna make this little building because this is new and you might recognize it because it is very very similar to what we have over here. It is actually quite the same building except I've dumbed down the roof a bit and we've changed these metal pieces to wooden ones and it's actually very interesting because for the rest it actually looks like even in real life it's the same uh, building and same structure like uh, even the amount of windows that the shop has is the same like I place it down kind of how I thought it should be and it lined up like perfectly on every side which is pretty freaking fantastic now we need another one for over here but this one does look a lot different as you can see over here in the back here we have the one that we've already built and then over here we've got this one which is a much smoother kind of wood um, much more painted processed uh, probably gonna use the East Asia painted timber for this um, yeah let's get to work on it so in order to do that in order to build it we're just going to take the same pieces of this building that we have over here uh, and the only problem being that we don't actually know the center i'm going to assume that this thing is the center so let's get a mud pillar and i copied over this wall because i want to know exactly how uh, white this needs to be because now we can just take our East Asia painted timber and put that over here just line that up as well as we can and that gives us a nice basis to start working from and let's do that in another time lapse wow two time lapses in one video no there's actually two more coming uh, I realized that and uh, kind of the best way to show you guys progress is not by talking about everything I do, but actually by showing it. Uh, and that is, of course, best done through a time lapse. So we've gone from time lapses to real time segments to back to time lapses um, in our kind of evolution of videos. But I'm starting to get, uh, I'm starting to be really happy with uh, the way we're tackling these videos. And even though this video is really long, <laughs> I know. Um, we do get a lot done and I'm really happy with it, but you can see uh, I kind of started off with a blank wall and we are kind of putting that everywhere and then we're kind of customizing it to kind of fit with all the other walls and here I'm I was looking for a piece that we could use for kind of the counter, but I couldn't really find anything Yeah, here. I'm looking looking like oh, what could we use? Uh, but there wasn't really any piece that really fit because uh, the counter is supposed to stick out a lot more than it does now but yeah just couldn't find anything that really worked so went with that we used the same pieces to kind of uh, have a closed metal sheet in the end i'm not sure if i should have used uh, just art pieces instead and um, but i think it looks fine and here we are kind of moving the things away from the edge to kind of create a more distinct uh, line between the edge and not the edge. Now I I was looking at reference space to see where these windows are exactly and there's three of them and uh, so we put those into place by rotating and now we have the general uh, building finished so I can just take out all the unnecessary bits and there we are. So now it is a case of customizing each side once again to kind of have it be what it should. And this side contains a little board that tells people to go to the safari restaurant if this thing is closed. So yeah, just more details on this thing. I keep getting interrupted, which is why uh, <laughs> sometimes you might kind of hear me shift voice. But yeah, we're just putting these details on and that is that now we're opening up this one because that's where we're going to put the shop just like the other house and yeah i'm kind of fiddling around like oh well, how can i place these and eventually i put them like that that hides it away nicely because that's kind of the downside of using the um girders and here i'm looking at kind of what type of window 
piece can we use here? Because there's like a window and a door. And I'm going with this one because it fits perfectly. Uh, sadly, it does have that, um, yeah, that little frame in the middle there. So we kind of just incorporate that into it. Uh, I'm not really sure how this door looks because uh, there's a fence going around it. So I've never really seen it. I kind of wish we had like the the glass pieces uh, or like a like a frameless window piece that also lights up at night because you could do some pretty cool stuff with that but so be it so um putting a door in the back same kind of method of the the girder pieces and that kind of finishes up the building so we can put it in place and relocate the shop to line and then kind of incorporate the shop into the building like so and that leaves the shop oh yeah wait we're putting these things around it uh kind of moving the hedge and there we go okay it has been put into place uh, we might have to tweak some of this stuff to account for the new uh, kind of larger size of this little hut oh i just noticed that is that oh wait that's the old one right you can go away and here we are with another time lapse yay because i once again recorded like half an hour of me placing down paths <laughs> which of course nobody wants to see so well maybe you do want to see it but now you still get to see it but in the time lapse format uh, getting rid of the store floor and yeah, what's, what's really cool about having to redo the pathing, even though it really sucks, of course. Uh, what's nice about it is that you get a chance to do it better. So that's what I really tried here. Um, to really get the path the way I want it. And I think it worked out pretty well in the end. Uh, it was nice to kind of uh, clean it up here and there. Because at some points it had gotten quite messy. Now over here we are placing on a really big path. Uh, to kind of be able to put all these benches and stuff in place. And all of the path is temporary because you can just remove it and the benches will stay. Uh, and yeah, that gives us this very nice path uh, in the place you want. And of course, I told you about the way that we want the brick pattern over there and stuff. And now what does kind of suck is that later I found out that the bricks kind of have to be in front of the, uh, the beige shop uh, as well. Uh, which we don't have right now, so that kind of sucks, but uh, all in all, it, it looks fine and I'm pretty happy with it. Now over here, we're putting a little bit of extra stuff for all the tables and stuff. I say stuff a lot. Uh, um, but yeah, that, that's just a bit more seating area. Uh, and it's separated from the other part of the park. And uh, what's pretty nice is that we actually do get people sitting down here pretty frequently. Uh, they buy their food at, at the little shops and then they go over there to uh, to have a nice meal. Um, over there, don't know what I did, but the pathing just kind of flunked into place. And yeah, now we're just hiding all of the little poles from the natural path. And here I want to connect it up to the toilet. But it seems like people are able to actually enter the toilet there. Because uh, the game's not complaining that the facility is inaccessible. So... I just left it like that. Uh, it does suck sometimes. The queue does want to connect up to a shop, but a regular path doesn't. Uh, yeah, that is always pretty frustrating. And here I'm also using uh, dirt to um, kind of mask around the path. And that uh, really allows us to, <clears throat> um, yeah, to kind of hide it a bit. Um, for, for some paths you can use stone, for other paths you can use the dirt material, um, but that really uh, yeah solves that. And what we're doing over here is I had an issue where people were kind of appearing out of nowhere at the entrance of the zoo. And I found out that it was actually these two shops where people were kind of getting stuck on the path or something and they started getting teleported away. And moving the shop kind of closer to the path and getting some path closer up to it uh, solved it. So that was pretty nice. Coming to the front of the zoo, I have reworked some things regarding the entrance. Mainly some 
Well, <laughs> I was gonna list everything, but let's just go over it. Um, I've placed down these little black buildings over here. One of them houses a toilet uh, that can be accessed from these walls. Still need to add some doors in here. I basically just copied the black building from the Africa village and stripped it of all its details uh, so that we could add the ones that should be here later. But the size of it was like perfect. So yeah, that's why I placed those down and now we can kind of use them. Still need to make it a bit bigger and such, but this is a good start. Then coming to the actual entrance. Oh, I still need to add the windows back in, I just realized. Well, what we have over here is our little old buildings and uh, the main entrance building, which uh, for the longest time I've constantly mentioned like, oh yeah, it still needs some work, this and that. Um, uh, I, have, I have done the work. <laughs> First of all, let's take in you can already kind of get a glimpse of what's inside there. Uh, but let's take in uh, some minor changes. I redid these colors based on the colors that we did in the Africa village. It actually looks a lot better now. And you can also see a small difference in kind of detail <laughs> as we've gotten better and kind of care more about the details. Like back when we made this, I was like, oh yeah, that's a nice little detail. That, that's, that really adds a lot. Uh, <laughs> And I thought like, oh yeah, this is about as detailed as I'm going to get. And now we are up to this and we'll probably get even crazier. Like the Africa village has really pushed my limits on the, on what I'm able and willing to do for this. But let's go inside as we reach one of the few interiors that we're probably going to be doing. Of course, we've got uh, this, we've got the gift shop and... Um, potentially the restaurant still not sure what type of interior we're going to be doing there uh, and then we're gonna get another restaurant later on but yeah this area is um, not entirely done there still needs to be some things added to it but the main bulk of it is ready we've got a nice little bench and yeah the interior walls are, are a completely different color still need to add some wall stuff over here and kind of fix up these windows entirely but man i'm happy with how this turned out like uh i especially like and uh, we've put this here like pretty we've put this here long ago uh this scratching post as the post uh, as the support beam which looks almost identical to the post that they have here in real life like this little part where the rope kind of skips a point uh, it's in the exact same spot as it, is, as it is in real life like it looks almost identical it's crazy uh, and then we have this counter over here with these little uh, uh, with these little devices where you can swipe your card and then and pay by card I don't know what the device is called in English I'm sorry um, yeah and then over here we've even got a little backstage area where there's some uh, offices I think and yeah, we still need to add a bit more of kind of backstage stuff but man this is great <laughs> and I'm not gonna do too much detail on these rooms I'm mainly gonna make what you can see through the doors um, which I guess is most of the room uh, but I'm really my focus for this this area is whatever you can see as a guest from here I kind of want to make uh, if you take if you decide to take the camera back here, you're you're gonna see some uh, some mess. <laughs> okay, I hope that the 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 queue poles wouldn't be as big and jarring, but sadly they are, because uh, I hope that I I was able to put a employee here, but I guess not. So let's just undo all of that. So now can I put you there? Yeah, we can. That's cool, that's cool. You are essentially just a piece of scenery. Uh, I wonder if I can rotate her in any way. Okay, so it does work. If they turn around they and you place them down, they'll, they'll face the way you place them. So now we just gotta find a vendor that is facing the way we want them to. And I think this guy might Ah, I thought the guy with the orange shirt was a vendor. Okay, come on, make the turn. There we go. That's good, I think. 
No, not yet, not yet. Okay, just turn a bit more. Oh, no, yes. Yes, now you are standing in the correct direction, <laughs> ready to help our customers. <laughs> cool, very, very cool. Oh, that makes me super happy. Okay, so one more time lapse. Uh, just a quick short one uh, in which we are going to take these little entrance buildings and kind of get them up to the level of detail and level of quality that uh, we kind of now have across the entire zoo. Uh, starting with this little door, um, which I did some weird stuff to kind of make it look like there was some depth in there, but there really wasn't. So just actually put the depth in there. Now we're kind of recoloring a lot of this stuff. Back when we built this, I was constantly going back and forth between like, should it be white, should it be beige? Uh, now I've decided they should be white and we're gonna stop changing it. Um, and here we are putting these kind of plastic pieces up to where those windows are. And yeah, then it's just a, a case of detailing because yeah, we've gotten quite a bit more detailed lately. And uh, yeah, of course the entrance should reflect that. So yeah, it was just a b bunch of kind of getting these things up to, <laughs> yeah, up to the edge. And normally you would do this stuff with like the mud pillar technique and making sure all sides are the same, blah, 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 blah. Um, I kind of failed in doing that in the first place, back when we first made these. And of course now, since we're just updating the existing building, it's kind of difficult to just go in and uh, do all that stuff. So that's why we're going the extra mile and, and just do far too much work for this. Um, but yeah, it ends up looking pretty nice. And uh, the slight inconsistency that remain kind of are just whatever. So yeah, now it's a case of putting these things in, and it's actually kind of fun. They kind of hide away underneath that little bit of plaster, but we still want to rotate them because uh, that makes it a lot easier to do the orange border or red. It's kind of supposed to be red more than orange, I guess. Uh, but the border you see around them uh, is much easier to do if you rotate them slightly because then um, moving it up straight just makes it all work. So yeah, here we're putting in all these things and now the annoying part is that because they're so close to the plaster piece when selecting them it actually selects the plaster piece. So you have to remove the plaster piece and then select the thing and then do control Z to put the plaster piece back. Uh, it doesn't do it on all of them, just some, but it's quite annoying. Uh, but yeah, here we're rotating all of them and there's kind of a bit of that workflow thing that I talk to every, every now and again. Just don't do it piece by piece, just do a lot of things at once that you can do kind of uh, not one by one. But um, yeah, kind of in steps, I guess. And there we go, it's done. All right, time to wrap up the episode. Let's quickly go over the final few changes. So we've got these two black buildings uh, containing toilets and backstage stuff, offices. We have laid the foundations to these buildings, which are going to be more uh, kind of staff area over here, as well as kind of a guest um, seating area over there. Coming uh, near the entrance, we have kind of revamped uh, the entrance to be a bit more on par with the details, uh, level of detail of the rest of the park. With this little extra stripe and some red in there, added those to these things you saw the time that's right yeah <laughs> then over here the kind of crown jewel of this area uh, is the information desk area we've got a little guy over here who's gonna greet all the guests um, and yeah just super super detailed i uh, went for a different kind of bench some extra potted plants then fit next to it because this bench was a little bit smaller and oh, gee, I'm just so happy with how this looks. It, it's incredible. We've got a little bit of backstage stuff here, some uh, office things. I uh, didn't put anything in here in the end. I might still add something there, but it's just to uh, kind of have something in the background there. There's this really detailed office set on the workshop, uh, but it's sadly it looks amazing and 
tons of work must have gone into it, but sadly it's just a little bit... Skill-wise, it's just too big for what I'm working with. So I actually used this much simpler of a set. Uh, and I think it's also good because uh, it has a much lower piece count. And since this stuff is just all put in the background, you're really not going to be able to see much of it anyway. So yeah, that's why we went with that. And so yeah, super, super happy with how all of this turned out. Uh, there's a s some slight errors in it in especially the fact that this log doesn't really go along the entire way and it's actually not over here but i don't know where it stops and i kind of like the look of it now so i'm just gonna keep it like that what am i doing so yeah and and this path uh, this place is actually path uh there's actually a path in here um but sadly guests don't really have a reason to go here so they probably never will um, but if the game ever adds uh, Vista points, which I never played Planet Coaster much, so I don't really know what Vista points are. However, from what I understand, we would be able to place like a Vista point over here and guests will actually wander over here and... Um, yeah, it will look like they're actually interacting with, uh, with this dude, perhaps. So... If we ever get those, then we'll put them in there and maybe they'll attract a few peeps to go in there, but... I mean, just overall, I'm just super happy with, with how this turned out. So I don't really care if guests walk through it or not. But that's going to wrap up this episode. It's probably way too long <laughs> already. But we did make a huge amount of progress on the entrance area. And we will continue to do so in the upcoming time, probably. So I want to thank you all for watching. Have a good day, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.